In this video, we'll be discussing the upper respiratory tract, which is there to transport, moisten, warm, and filter the incoming air. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose, which is the opening into which air enters and leaves the respiratory system or leaves the body. Uh, the nose includes the external nares or the nostrils. Uh, the nose has hairs to trap large particles that might get into the respiratory system and cause problems. The nasal cavity is the hollow space behind the nose. It's divided into left and right halves by the nasal septum. The nasal conche divide the nasal cavity into superior, middle, and inferior meatuses, uh, which are basically grooves that allow air to pass through the nasal cavity. There's mucus in the upper respiratory tract. Uh, it's, a, it's also a ciliated epithelium, so when the particles get trapped in the mucus, the cilia creates a current and moves the trapped particles from the nasal cavity to the pharynx or from the larynx up into the esophagus. Uh, goblet cells secrete the mucus, and basically this is a way to take things that are trapped and get them out of the body. The nasal cavity is continuous with the nasal sinuses, or paranasal sinuses, I should say. These are air-filled spaces in the maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid bones that lighten the skull and act as resonating chambers for speech. We discussed these when we talked about the skeletal system earlier in the year. From the nasal cavity, air moves into the pharynx, which connects the nasal cavity to the larynx. The pharynx is a pathway for air and food. It's divided into three sections. The superior upper section is the nasal pharynx, and it is, the, is where air moves from the nasal cavity through the internal nares into the nasal pharynx. From there, it's going to move into the oral pharynx, which is going to be connected with the oral cavity. This is where food and air pathways cross. Uh, the uvula closes off the opening to the nasopharynx when you swallow. We talked about that in the digestive system. And then from there, the air is going to move into the laryngopharynx, which is going to carry air into the larynx or the voice box, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So the larynx or voice box is where the vocal folds or vocal cords are located. Uh, it's made of several cartilage, including cartilages, including the thyroid cartilage, which is sometimes called the Adam's apple because in males, when we when males go through puberty, the thyroid cartilage enlarges due to the increase in testosterone. There's also the cricoid cartilage, along with some other cartilages as well. In the voice box, we have two sets of vocal cords. One set, the false vocal cords, is above the true vocal cords. The false vocal cords are there to protect the true vocal cords. Uh, the true vocal cords are the ones that produce sound when they vibrate. And then the opening to the larynx is called the glottis. And you can see the epiglottis here uh, from the superior view. Uh, again, closes the larynx when you swallow so food doesn't go down into your lungs or, or liquids. The glottis, like I said, is the opening to the larynx. And like I said, there's two sets of vocal cords. The true vocal cords produce sound. The pitch of the sound is controlled by the tension. Uh, the higher the tension, the higher the pitch is. The intensity or loudness is controlled by the force of air. When males go through puberty, their vocal cords thicken, and if, so they vibrate at a lower frequency, so they have a lower pitch. The trachea is a pathway for air between the larynx and the bronchi, and it's supported by several rings of hyaline cartilage. It's about two and a half centimeters in diameter and about 12 and a half centimeters long. And like I said, it connects the larynx with the bronchi. Sometimes if something is blocking the flow of air uh, by you know, some type of instruction in the larynx, some type of medical person may form a tracheostomy 
which in, makes an incision in the neck and into, into the trachea. And then a, some type of tube is placed into the incision to allow air to pass between the outside of the body and the lungs.